Hello, so in my previous video, I talked to you guys about, you know, how the progression of the SI training program is and what really happens in a grad program uh, for SI training. Now, I'll keep on doing that uh, until I graduate. Now, I also want to provide information on the SI training, you know, career or even information to know as SI trainer uh, to help you guys, you know, for SI training students or even uh, other people as well who are interested in this. So basically my plan is to do a video on, you know, probably upper body quarter assessment, lower body quarter assessment, and many others. Um, it'll just all depend. But today I want to talk to you guys about cranial nerve assessment and how to perform it. So let's begin. So before I do it, I want to provide an introduction. So cranial nerves, there are 12 of them in there in the brain. Now, they are important to understand and know for an athletic training uh, because they are closely associated with concussions. Now, concussions is a mild traumatic brain injury that occurs when a person does you know, a head-to-head -head collision or even an explosion can cause a uh, concussion. So basically, that's when the brain rocks back and forth uh, into the skull and causes uh, swelling. Now that swelling can also affect and impede the cranial nerves. It's kind of interesting uh, because uh, when I was at John Carroll University, the doctor did these cranial nerve assessments and some of the uh, you know tests that the athlete did um, were completely off. So was, for example, a doctor would do like an eye movement test and the athlete's eye wouldn't look at the finger or they would experience like concussion symptoms like nausea, dizziness or headache, right? While doing the test, which is a sure sign that they do have a concussion. But sometimes, like, the athlete would be very delayed, like, five to ten seconds on eye movement, or they'd be very sensitive to light, or something in those lines associated with the cranial nerves and the test with them. Now, the cranial nerves are very important uh, for concussion evaluation. It can also be used to, like, test for the progression of in an athlete and how they're doing with a concussion. Now, the important thing for uh, this is to understand that the cranial nerves are closely linked with uh, concussions. Now, Alongside this, um, you can use this cranial nerve assessment for, you know, evaluation and on the field. Um, what's also good is that you can use this assessment for or alongside with another assessment tool. And I like to use the SCAT. And the SCAT is the Sport Concussion Assessment Tool. And in 2016, a Berlin study um, mentioned that this is one of the most effective tools. Now, I'll provide the link down below with that article. Now, in the SCAD test, basically, you know, it has uh, tests for, you know, balance, cognitive screening, cranial nerves, and, you know, memory as well as many other tests. And I'll provide a link down below with this SCAD test and what it really looks like. Uh, so basically, 
that alongside the cranial nerves will really test and evaluate a concussion. Now, let's begin with the cranial nerves and then also how to assess it. The cranial nerves are 12 of them. And if an athlete can perform the test, then that means that the cranial nerve is not affected or impacted in any way and also might uh, be a sure sign that they do not have a concussion. Now, if they can perform it, then that's definitely a sure sign that they do have a concussion. Now, number one is olfactory, and that's associated with smell. So you'll have an athlete smell like a familiar order, maybe like Gatorade. So you'll have them uh, smell it and see if they can smell it or not. Number two is associated with optics. So you take your you know, phone or you can take a flash, uh, not a flashlight, but a pen light and basically shine into a light in their eyes. So you have them cover their eye and then uh, you'll have the phone or the pen light in your hand and then you'll have them follow the light back and forth, right? Again, with the left eye, you'll do that. Now, if they experience you know, concussion symptoms, like I said previously, um, then that's probably a sure sign that they do have a concussion. Now, three, four, and six are basically the same um, or test the same kind of thing, and that is eye movement. All right, so number three is trochlear. Sorry, no, number three is oculomotor. Number four is trochlear, and number six is abducens. Now, that's associated with eye movement again. So I like to do like an H and an X, and so I'll have the athlete follow in an H um, and, then, and then an X, and that tests those three nerves. Now, number five and number seven are associated with the same thing as well, and that's associated with the face. And basically, um, you know, number five is trigeminal, so that's associated with jaw clenching. So if you can clench your jaw, then that's really good. And then number seven is associated with facial sensation. So uh, I like them to do expressions. So smile, frown, um, move their eyebrows, right? Also to see if, you know, this side, you know, if this feels the same as this, right? That tests kind of that cranial nerve, but also will test um, cervical, nerve root C3, and I'll talk to you guys uh, in another video about that. And I like to do that. Also, I like to do like, you know, something sharp and see if that's like the same feeling from this side to this side. Now, in number eight, it's called acoustic, but it can, it's also called vestor predator. Vestibulocular nerve, uh, and basically, um, the biggest thing is that with the acoustic, it means hearing, uh, and so the test for this is you'll stand behind the athlete or the patient. And you'll rub your thumbs against your fingers, okay? And then you'll put it right next to your ears, and you'll do that test. Now, I like to do this because it's, you know, small, and um, the, it's like a very low noise that they really um, can't hear, and it makes it really hard um for the test right and that's what we want this would be too easy for the athlete um you also want to be behind the athlete because it makes it a little bit harder um 
uh, for the test for them so that you know if it is a concussion or not. Now, number nine is glossopharyngeal. That's associated with swelling. So with that um, Gatorade you had them smell, you can also have them drink it. If they can taste it, then that's a sure sign um, that that cranial nerve is intact and working properly. Now, number uh, 10 is associated with Vegas. So you'll have them um, say, ah, ah, and then you'll kind of look in their mouth um, and see if everything's looking good in there. Uh, basically, it's associated with like kind of speech, more or less. And then number 11 is spinal accessory. So you'll have them um, do a shoulder shrug. But while they do the shoulder shrug, you'll have your hand and you're going to push down. So while you push down, they're going to push up. Right, that test for that neck motion. Now, number 12 is hypoglossal. Now, that's associated with tongue movement. And if they can perform that, then, um, then that's a sure sign that that cranial nerve is still intact. Now, with the vagus nerve, um, the tongue depressor, what you're really looking for when you look in there is kind of to see if the you know tongue is working properly and that's associated kind of with number 12 as well like with tongue movement and everything like that and if um you can do speech and everything like that and that's usually what the tongue depressor um is kind of used for now i'll provide a link down below on this document and um, how this document really helped me with cranial nerves and how to really understand what uh, these cranial nerves are all about. Now, uh, that's the video on cranial nerves. I uh, provided like an introduction about it, uh, or what the cranial nerves are and how to perform them. All right, thank you guys. If, any, if you have any questions, comment down below. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later.